All right, so in this video, we're going to do a problem on how to calculate the solubility of a salt. In this case, it's pure water. So the question is as follows, and I'll obviously put it in the description below because I'm not actually going to write it out. It's actually kind of long. So it says, and I quote, Calculate the solubility product constant for each of the following substances, given that their molar concentrations of their saturated solutions are as indicated. So... Let's do two of these. Uh, so the first one we're given is, all right, so this is A, I guess. So we're given this salt. This is a solid. And we're told that the molar concentration of this is 7.1 times 10 to the negative four molar, AKA moles per liter, right? So this I believe is, uh, Silver vanadate, I believe. I'm um, not exactly sure what uh, this this uh, vanadium oxide ion is called, but anyway. So we're told that the that exactly 7.1 times 10 to the 4 moles per liter has dissolved in solution, right? So let's just write out the equation. So we know that uh, hmm, let's do yellow here. So we know that silver uh, vanadate is a solid and that goes dissolves reversibly into uh, I believe that this is a I believe the VO3 is a VO3 minus I believe and obviously these are aqueous but that's not whether it's a you know a plus one ion or plus two ion um, doesn't really matter just as long as the you know if it was a 2VO3, obviously that would matter because, you know, stoichiometry, so duh, but, um, <clears throat> excuse me, but whether it's a plus one, what, what the oxidation state is, it doesn't really matter, so we know that, so basically, if we know that 7.1 times 10 to the negative 4 moles has dissolved, we know that that's basically how much uh, silver ions and how much, how many uh, vanadium oxide or vanadate ions uh, we have in solution, right? Because if we just look at the stoichiometry, if we know that, um, you know, 7 times 10 to the negative 4 moles has been consumed, we know that for every mole of salt that is dissolved, we get one mole of silver ions and one mole of vanadate ions, right? So it just makes sense based on the stoichiometry. So therefore, we know that from a previous video, we know that the solubility product constant is just going to be equal to the uh, the concentrations of the uh, the products in this case, right? Because since the reactant is a solid, uh, the concentration is 1, and so therefore if you divide anything by 1, it's just that anything, so we just leave it out. Um, so this is the concentration of Ag plus times the concentration of vanadate. Right, and so obviously these are aqueous, and so therefore this is going to be equal to, because one mole of salt, for every one mole of salt that dissolves, we have one mole of silver ions and one mole of vanadate ions, right? So therefore, we know, based on that, the concentration of the silver ions is going to be, uh, let's pick a different color, because I don't like pink, it doesn't really show up that well, uh, 7.1 times 10 to the negative 4 molar, aka moles per liter, times, well, what's the concentration of anodine ions? Again, it's the same thing, right? 7.1 times 10 to the negative 4 molar, right? So KSP in this case, right, because that's what the, uh, the question asks. Uh, yeah, so uh, the solubility product constant is going to be equal to um, basically the... Um, the product of the of these two numbers, right? So that is according to my arithmetic is going to be five. And that is not a good five. Let me try that again. That's a five. Let's see. That's a five. Yeah, not that great. Times ten to the negative seven. Uh, yeah. So. So that's the solubility product constant. Obviously, it's kind of small, so it's not a lot dissolving, but 
Um, yeah, so that is KSP. So let's do let's do another one. Let's do one more. A little this one's going to be a little bit more difficult. That's okay. So this is going to be let's say let's say we're given uh, let's say lead lead. Lead iodate, and this is obviously a solid. And we're also told that the uh, the molar. Uh, let's see. We're also told that the molar concentration of the, basically how much is dissolved. Um, if you just you know translate that into English, is four point three. Times ten to the negative five molar, aka moles per liter. Right, so again, we did what we, we'll basically do what we did with the previous problem. I'm saying a lead iodate. At least I, I think that's iodate. It might be uh, called something else, uh, which is a solid. Is going to go reversibly to lead two plus plus two iodate, and that's a minus. Right, so now here's where things get a little complicated, um, because for every one mole of salt that dissolves, I have one mole of lead, uh, two plus ions, as well as two moles of iodate ions. Right, so we know that the concentration, the concentration of lead, is going to be equal to, right, four point three times 10 to the negative 5 molar, right? We know that. But the question is, what's the concentration of iodate? Well, if you think about it, for every one mole of lead ions, I have two moles of iodate ions, right? So then, therefore, uh, just by intuition, uh, the concentration of iodate is going to be equal to two times the concentration of lead, right? And that's a minus, and this is a 2 plus. Always forget my oxidation states. And that's going to be equal to basically 4.3 times 10 to the negative 5 times 2, which is uh which is one moment please. 4.3 times uh, 4.3 times 10 to the negative 5 times 2 is we have uh let's see is 8.6 times 10 to the negative 5 uh, which is actually sort of a duh because if you just you know 4 times 2 is 8 3 times 2 is 6 yeah okay so silly me I didn't need the calculator for that but anyway um, so we know that again the K solubility product constant is going to be equal to the concentration of lead times the concentration of iodate uh, minus. Now, remember the stoichiometry. This is actually squared, right? Because for every one mole of lead, we have two moles of iodate, right? So if you think about the equilibrium, uh, the uh, equilibrium expression, we know that the basically, you know, each of these is raised to the stoichiometry. Obviously, this is raised to one because we only have, because this is a one here, right? This is a one in front of this. Um, and so it's easy to forget, you know, when you're doing easy problems, everything has a one-to-one -one ratio, and then you have one problem where you have a two-to-one ratio, and then, you know, you kind of forget about this because you figure that, well, I already um, accounted for that. But you have to account for it twice. Uh, so therefore, we know that, let's just pick another color here. We know that the KSP, this is going to be equal to the concentration of lead, which is going to be 4.3. 3 times 10 to the negative 5 molar times 8.6 times 10 to the negative 5 molar squared. And if you do your math right, uh, unlike me, well, um, you will get that the, let's see, you'll get that the solubility product constant for lead iodate in pure water is 8 
times. Uh, excuse me, it's not eight. It's uh, let's undo that. It is three point two times ten to the negative thirteen. Right, so that's K S P. Right, so hopefully, so um, hopefully this helped. I know that this can be kind of confusing. And, uh, but, you know, if you really just think about the, you know, solubility product constant and just apply the, uh, you know, equations and stuff and really think about, um, and just, and just think about solubility in general, uh, it's, uh, it's not actually that hard. So hopefully this helped. We're going to do some more examples, uh, in the future. So thanks for watching. And as always, we will see you all in the next video.